Hello and welcome to our first episode into our deep dive in the missing book of Jubilees, which is not canonized by the mainstream church. It was found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. However, this book, as I will get into, was very well known and very well used in the early Christendom. Now, as always, if you would like to join a deeper discussion on these heretical, banned, or missing books, whatever you want to call them, then please join us on Tuesday nights on the Dark Outpost. There is a link down in the description box below. The episodes air on the Dark Outpost at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Of course, as I say often on these follow-up episodes the next day, David has his own platform. So therefore, we don't have to worry about things like censorship when we're talking about these interesting books that have been scrubbed from us. Of course, it's also nice to have two people engaging in this conversation versus just one. On my channel, you just get me. And if you're like me, you like to hear multiple perceptions on the same topic. And before we get started, I would also love to thank all of our patrons. As always, we've picked up quite a few new patrons over the next couple weeks, and I'm super excited about that. I could not be more thankful for all of you. If you would like to join our Patreon program, again, there is a link down in the description box below. If you are at the producer level of our Patreon and have not sent me any of your business information, please go ahead and do that at esotericatlanta at gmail.com so that I can place your information down in the description box of our videos and promote you on our videos as well. Now looking at the Book of Jubilees, the Book of Jubilees is also known as the Book of Divisions or Lesser Genesis, Little Genesis. There are many people who spend way more time than I get to spend breaking down these books. And I will provide some links down in the description box if you would like to go into further research on this book. Again, as I said, with the Gnostic Gospels, especially with the Apocryphon of John, there are people who literally spend their whole professional career breaking down these works. This is not my professional career. I'm just very curious and I like to research. So what you're getting from me is really just scratching the surface of these very fascinating books. And so again, if you want to go into deeper research for yourself, all of that information will be down below. So the history of this manuscript, this manuscript was found in the Dead Sea Scrolls in 1947. We have episodes on the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Essenes that will also be, that playlist will also be down below as well if you missed those episodes. So the Book of Jubilees was found in caves 1Q17, 1Q18, 2Q19, 2Q20, and 3Q5. There were 15 total manuscripts found, which is a lot. Shows you how popular this book was for the early people. It's all written in Hebrew, the ones found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So they dated these copies back to the second century, and they were always paired with the book of Genesis. And as we start to go through the book of Jubilees, you will definitely see how the two definitely go together. There's more detail um, in the book of Jubilee about certain events that happen in Genesis. Now, these are definitely copies. These were not the original uh, Book of Jubilee. And again, the copy date was dated to around the second century BC. The manuscript was well known by early Christians as the early church fathers often quoted from it. This was considered an authentic book by early Christians and was very well circulated. And in Ethiopia, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, 
and the Ethiopian Jewish heritage still have this book canonized. So if you are from Ethiopia or you travel to Ethiopia, their Bibles still include the Book of Jubilees. I believe it might be called the Book of Divisions in their Bibles. Uh, same thing, again, same, same book. So this book is believed to be written by Moses, by those who believe this book is doctrine, and by a Pharisee, by those who claim that it is heresy, that one of the Pharisees wrote this, not Moses. However, again, many people who do believe that this is legitimate doctrine would claim this as part of the Torah, which is part of the Old Testament that was written by Moses. John the Baptist specifically picked this book as a very important part of the Torah. The Catholic Church then ruled over John the Baptist, calling this book heresy. I don't know about you, but I'm going to take the word of John the Baptist over the corporation of the church any day. John the Baptist lived in Qumran, where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found at that point. Qumran was known as Beth Araba. So if you're familiar with your ancient days of Israel, then Beth Araba would be what we call Qumran today. So John the Baptist hated the Pharisees. So this is a lot of what people claim that this book is legitimate because John the Baptist had a problem with the Pharisees. Obviously, a lot of those guys did. So why would he promote a book that was written by the Pharisees? No, he wouldn't. He would not promote anything written by the Pharisees. So to understand the book of Jubilee, the book is, again, often called the book of division because it was about dividing the earth. This is also referred to as the Apocalypse of Moses. Jubilee is referring to a timeline, 7 or 49 years. And you'll see that as we start to read through the book of Jubilee. There's a lot of timeline information with numbers and the way they're calculating certain time. Now, a lot of people who think this book is heresy will call this the book of divisions because they think it divides people, but that's not true at all. Again, it's just literally how the earth was divided during certain events in the beginning. It's not about division amongst people. So again, this works with the book of Genesis and explains things in detail in regard to seasons and time. And according to a lot of the scholars that I listen to, we heavily mistranslate things in Genesis without having the aid of the book of Jubilee. This might trigger some pride and ego within our own knowledge of Genesis. We got a bit of a taste of that with the Apocryphon of John, that there's just a lot of information that's been left out, and so we tend to mistranslate certain things. And then once we find these missing pieces, it all kind of comes full circle and makes more sense. So the Damascus document was also found in Qumran. It was regarding the law. So it wasn't scripture, but it was almost like a commentary piece on the Book of Jubilee. And the Damascus document is dated between 50 BC and 100 AD. And part of it says, For Yahuwah made a covenant with you and all Israel, therefore a man shall bind himself by oath to return to the law of Moses, for in it all things are strictly defined. As for the exact termination of their times to which Israel turns a blind eye, behold, it is strictly defined in the book of the divisions of the times into their jubilee and weeks. And on the day that man swears to return to the law of Moses, the angel of persecution, or Satan, shall cease to follow him provided he fulfills his word for his reason Abraham circumcised himself on the day that he knew. So again, just very interesting um, commentary from the people that lived in Qumran who very much regarded the book of Jubilee as legitimate scripture and doc doctrine, which would have been John the Baptist as well. So what to expect from Jubilee? This book explains the timeline from creation to the exodus of Moses with his people from Egypt. Again, that's when they parted the Red Sea, a very big moment in the Bible. 
Again, the timeline is measured in Jubilee, so seven or 49 years. This book will give information on fallen angels as well as the destruction of the Nephilim, which then would fall into the book of Enoch, which was also removed from the Bible. We will get into details of these groups of giants and how some of them are chained apparently until the tribulation, which is interesting because when we did our deep dive into the giants, into the Nephilim, we spoke about how allegedly there are still giants in stasis who are chained up. And when we get to that point in this book where we're talking about that, I will include links to those videos in the description box. We're not going to get to that part today, so I'm not going to include that today. Today we're just going to focus on the first three chapters of Jubilee. So in chapter one, we're going to see God just chatting with Moses on the mount. And God tells Moses what is going to happen. In chapter 2, we take a deeper dive into the creation story with a huge focus on the Sabbath, which is the seventh day of the week or a jubilee. In the third chapter, we're going to round off the creation story. Things get really interesting and new, somewhat new, in the fourth chapter, which we will cover next week. This week in the introduction, we're just reading the first few chapters and starting to get familiar with the book of Jubilee. You might recognize a lot of what is spoken about from the book of Genesis, hopefully with a little bit more detail for you. And with that being said, we are now going to move into the reading of the first three chapters of Jubilee. Now, again, I have not uh, added any commentary to this reading. Sometimes I do in past recordings, but for these first three chapters, I have not added any of my own commentary because, again, it's just the introduction. I'm sure in the next few chapters when things get really spicy and we start looking at things like the giants, I might add some commentary in. But for today, it's just a basic read through. Once again, if you want more information or a deeper dive into this book, please join us on the Dark Outpost on Tuesday nights. And with that being said, let's get started with the book of Jubilee. The book of Jubilee, chapter 1, verse 1. And it came to pass in the first year of the exodus of the children of Israel out of Egypt, in the third month, on the sixteenth day of the month, that God spake to Moses, saying, Come up to me on the mount, and I will give thee two tablets of stone of the law and of the commandment which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Moses went up into the mount of God, and the glory of the Lord abode on Mount Sinai, and a cloud overshadowed it six days. And he called to Moses on the seventh day out of the midst of the cloud, and appeared of the glory of the Lord, was like a flaming fire on the top of the mount. And Moses was on the mount forty days and forty nights, and God taught him the earlier and the latter history of the division of the days of the law and of the testimony. And he said, Incline thine heart to every word which I shall speak to thee on this mount, and write them in a book in order that their generations may see how I have not forsaken them for all the evil which they have wrought in transgressing the covenant which I established between me and thee for their generations this day on Mount Sinai. And thus it will come to pass, when all these things come upon them, that they will recognize that I am more righteous than they in all their judgment and in all their actions, and they will recognize that I have been truly with them. And do thou write for thyself all these words which I declare unto thee this day, for I know their rebellion and their stiff neck, before I bring them into the land of which I swear to their fathers, to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob, saying, Unto your seed will I give a land flowing with milk and honey, and they will eat and be satisfied, and they will turn to strange gods, to which cannot deliver them from aught of their tribulation. And this witness shall be heard for a witness against thee, for they will forget my commandments. 
all that I command them, and they will walk after the Gentiles, and after their uncleanliness, and after their shame, and will serve their gods, and will prove upon them an offense, and a tribulation, and an affliction, and a snare. And many will perish, and they will be taken captive, and will fall into the hands of the enemy, because they have forsaken my ordinance, and my commandments, and the festivals of my covenant, and my Sabbaths, and my holy place, which I have hollowed for myself in their midst, and my tabernacle, and my sanctuary, which I have hollowed for myself in the midst of the land, that I should set my name upon it, and it should dwell there." Verse 10 goes on, and they will make to themselves high places and groves and graven images, and they will worship each his own graven image so as to go astray, and they will sacrifice their children to demons and to all the works of the error of their hearts. And I will send witnesses unto them that I might witness against them, but they will not hear and will not slay the witnesses also, and they will persecute those who seek the law, and they will change everything as to work evil before my eyes." And I will hide my face from them, and I will deliver them into the hands of the Gentiles for captivity, and for prey, and for devouring. And I will remove them from the midst of the land, and I will scatter them amongst the Gentiles. And they will forget all my law, and all my commandments, and all my judgments, and will go astray as new moons, and Sabbaths, and festivals, and jubilees, and ordinances. And after this they will turn to me from amongst the Gentiles with all their heart, and with their soul, and with their strength, and I will gather them from amongst all the Gentiles, and they will seek me, so I shall be found of them when they seek me with all their heart and all their soul. And I will disclose to them abounding peace with righteousness, and I will remove the plant of up righteousness with all my heart and with all my soul and they shall be for a blessing and not for a curse and they shall be the head and not the tail and I will build my sanctuary in their midst and I will dwell with them and I will give their God and they shall be my people in truth and righteousness and I will not forsake them nor fell them for I am the Lord their God And Moses fell on his face and prayed and said, O Lord, my God, do not forsake thy people and thy inheritance, so that they should wonder in the error of their hearts, and do not deliver them into the hands of their enemies, the Gentiles, lest they should rule over them and cause them to sin against thee. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be lifted upon thy people, and create in them an upright spirit. And let not the spirit of Belier rule over them, to accuse them before thee, and to ensnare them from all the paths of righteousness, so they may perish from before thy face. But they are thy people and thy inheritance, which thou hast delivered with thy great power from the hands of the Egyptians. Create in them a clean heart and a holy spirit, and let them not be ensnared in their sins from henceforth unto eternity. And the Lord said to Moses, I know their counterness and their thoughts and their stiff nakedness, and they will not be obedient till they confess their own sin and the sins of their fathers. And after this, they will turn to me in all uprightness and with all their heart and with all their soul, and I will circumcise the foreskin of their heart and the foreskin of their heart of their seed, and I will create in them a holy spirit, and I will cleanse them so they shall not turn away from me from the day unto eternity. And their souls will cleave to me and to all my commandments, and they will fulfill my commandments, and I will be their father, and they shall be my children." and they shall all be called children of the living God. And every angel and every spirit shall know, ye they shall know that these are my children, and I am their father, and uprightness and righteousness, and I shall love them. And do thou write down for thyself all these words which I declare unto thee on this mountain, for the first and the last which shall come to pass in all the divisions of the days, in the law, and in the testimony, and in the weeks, and in the jubilees unto eternity, until I descend and dwell with them throughout eternity. And he said to the angel of presence, 
Write for Moses from the beginning of creation till my sanctuary has been built among them for all eternity, and the Lord will appear to the eyes of all, and all shall know that I am the God of Israel, and the Father of all children of Jacob, and the King on Mount Zion for all eternity, and Zion and Jerusalem shall be holy. And the angels of the presence who went before the camp of Israel, took the tables of the division of the years from the time of creation of the law and of the testimony of the weeks of the jubilees according to the individual years, according to all the numbers of the jubilees. From the day of the new creation, when the heavens and the earth shall be renewed and all their creation according to the powers of the heaven and according to all the creations of the earth until the sanctuary of the Lord shall be made in Jerusalem on Mount Zion and all the luminaries be renewed for healing and for peace and for blessings for all elect of Israel and that thus it may be from this day unto all days of the earth. So this begins chapter 2 in the book of Jubilee, chapter 2, verse 1. And the angel of the presence spake to Moses according to the word of the Lord, saying, Write the complete history of the creation, how in six days the Lord God finished all his work and all that he created and kept the Sabbath on the seventh day and hallowed it for all the ages and appointed it as a sign for all his work. For on the first day he created the heavens which are above, and the earth, and the water, and all the spirits which serve before him, the angels of presence, and the angels of sanctification, and the angels of the spirit of fire, and the angels of the spirit of the wind, and the angels of the spirit of the clouds, and of darkness, and of snow, and of hail, and of frost, and the angels of the voices, and of the thunder, and of the lightning, and the angels of the spirits of the cold, and of heat, and of winter, and of spring, and of autumn, and of summer, and of all the spirits of his creation, which are in the heavens and on the earth. He created the abyss and the darkness and the night and the light and dawn and day, which he hath prepared in the knowledge of his heart. And thereupon we saw his works and praised him and lauded before him on account of all his works. For seven great works did he create on the first day. And on the second day he created the firement in the midst of the water, and the waters were divided on that day. Half of them went up above, and half of them went down below, the firement that was in the midst of the face of the whole earth. And this was the only work God created on the second day. And on the third day, he commanded the waters to pass from off the face of the whole earth into one place and dry land to appear. And the waters did so as he commanded them, and they retired from off the face of the earth into one place outside of this firement, and the dry land appeared. Verse 7 goes on to say, And on that day he created for them all the seas according to their separate gathering places, and all the rivers, and all the gatherings of the waters in the mountains, and on all the earth, and all the lakes, and all the dew of the earth, and the seed in which it is sown, and all sprouting things, and fruit-bearing trees, and trees of the wood, and the garden of Eden, and in Eden, and all the plants after their kind. These four great works God created on the third day. And on the fourth day he created the sun, and the moon, and the stars, and set them in the firement of the heaven, to give light upon all of the earth, and to rule over the day and the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for the days, and for Sabbaths, and for months, and for feasts, and for years, and for Sabbaths of years, and for jubilees, and all the seasons of the year. And it divideth the light from the darkness, and for prosperity, that all things may prosper which shoot and grow on the earth. These three kinds he made on the fourth day, and on the fifth day he created great sea monsters in the depths of the water, for these were the first things of flesh that were created by his hands. The fish and everything that moves in the waters and everything that flies, the birds and all their kind. 
and the sun rose above them to prosper them and above everything that was on the earth, everything that shoots out of the earth and all the fruit bearing trees and all flesh. These three kinds he created on the fifth day. And on the sixth day, he created animals, all of the earth, and all cattle, and everything that moves on the earth. And after all this, he created man. A man and a woman created he them, and gave him dominion over all that is upon the earth, and in the seas, and over everything that flies, and over beasts, and over cattle, and over everything that moves on the earth, and over the whole earth, and over all of this, he gave dominion. And these four kinds he created on the sixth day, and they were all together two and twenty kinds. And he finished all his work on the sixth day, all that is in the heavens and on earth and in the sea and in the abysses and in the light and in the darkness and in everything. Verse 17, and he gave us a great sign, the Sabbath day, that we should work six days, but keep Sabbath on the seven day from all work, and all the angels of the presence, and all the angels of sanctification, these two great classes, he hath bidden us to keep the Sabbath with him in heaven and on earth. And he said unto them, Behold, I will separate unto myself a people from among all the people, and these shall keep the Sabbath day, and I will sanctify them unto myself as my people, and will bless them as I have sanctified the Sabbath day, and do sanctify it upon myself, even so I will bless them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And so I have chosen the seeds of Jacob from amongst all that I have seen, and have written him down as my firstborn son, and have sanctified him unto myself for ever and ever. And I will teach them the Sabbath day, and they may keep Sabbath thereon from all work. And thus he created therein a sign in accordance with which they should keep Sabbath with us on the seventh day to eat and to drink and to bless him who has created all things as he has blessed and sanctified unto himself a peculiar people above all peoples that they should keep Sabbath together with us. And he caused his commands to ascend as a sweet savior acceptable before him all these days. There were two and twenty heads of mankind from Adam to Jacob, and two and twenty kinds of works were made until the seventh day. This is blessed and holy, and the former also is blessed and holy. And this one serves with that one for sanctification and blessings. And to this Jacob and his seed, it was granted that they should always be blessed and the holy ones of the first testimony and law, even as he had sanctified and blessed the Sabbath day on the seventh day. He created heaven and earth and everything, and he created in six days, and God made the seventh day holy for all his works. Therefore he commanded on its behalf that whoever does any work therein shall die, and that he who defiles it shall surely die. Wherefore do thou command the children of Israel to observe this day, and they may keep it holy, and not do thereon any work, and not to defile it, as it is holier than all other days. And whoever profanes it shall surely die. And whoever does thereon any work shall surely die eternally. And the children of Israel may observe this day throughout their generations and not be rooted out of the land, for it is a holy day and a blessed day. And everyone who observes it and keeps Sabbath thereon from all his work will be holy and blessed throughout all days like unto us. Declare and say to the children of Israel the law of this day both and they should keep sabbath thereon and they should not forsake it in the air of their hearts and that it is not lawful to do any work thereon which is unseemly to do thereon their own pleasures and that they should not prepare thereon anything to be eaten or drunk and that it is not lawful to draw water or bring it in or take out thereon through their gates any burden which they had not prepared for themselves on the sixth day in their dwelling 
and they shall not bring in nor take out from house to house on that day, for the day is more holy and blessed than any jubilee day of the jubilees. On this we keep Sabbath in the heaven before it was made known to any flesh to keep Sabbath thereon on the earth. And the creator of all things blessed it. But he did not sanctify all peoples and nations to keep Sabbath thereon, but Israel alone. Them alone he permitted to eat and drink and keep Sabbath thereon the earth. And the creator of all things blessed this day which he had created for blessings and holiness and glory above all days. This law and testimony was given to the children of Israel as a law forever unto their generations. This brings us to chapter 3 of the book of Jubilee, chapter 3, verse 1. And on the six days of the second week, we brought, according to the word of God, unto Adam all the beast and all the cattle and all the birds and everything that moves on the earth and everything that moves in the water according to their kinds and according to their types the beast on the first day the cattle on the second day the birds on the third day and all that which moves on the earth on the fourth day and all that which moves in the water on the fifth day and adam named them all by their respective names and as he called them so was their name and on these five days adam saw all these male and female according to every kind that was on the earth but he was alone and found no helpmate for him and the lord said unto him it is not good that the man should be alone let us make a helpmeet for him and the Lord our God caused a deep sleep to fall upon him, and he slept, and he took for the woman one rib from amongst his ribs, and this rib was the origin of the woman from amongst his ribs. And he built up the flesh in its steed and built the woman. And he awakened Adam out of his sleep, and on awakening he rose on the sixth day, and he brought her to him, and he knew her, and said unto her, This is now bone of my bone, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called my wife, because she was taken from her husband. Therefore shall man and wife be one. And therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh." And the first week was Adam created, and the rib, his wife, in the second week. He showed her unto him, and for this reason the commandment was given to keep in their defilement for a, a male seven days, and for a female twice seven days. And after Adam had completed forty days in the land where he had been created, we brought him into the garden of Eden to till and keep it, but his wife they brought in on the eighteenth day. And after this, she entered into the Garden of Eden. And for this reason, the commandment is written on the heavenly tablets in regard to her that gives birth. If she bears a male, she shall remain in her uncleanliness seven days according to the first week of days, and thirty and three days shall she remain in the blood of her purifying. And she shall not touch any hallowed thing, nor enter the sanctuary, until she accomplishes these days, which are enjoyed in the case of a male child. But in the case of a female child, she will remain in her uncleanliness two weeks of days, according to the first two weeks, and sixty-six days in the blood of her purification, and they will be in all eighty days. And when she had completed these eight days, we brought her into the garden of Eden, for it is holier than all the earth besides, and every tree that is planted in it is holy." Therefore there is ordained regarding her who bears a male or a female child the statue of those days that she should touch no hollow things nor enter into sanctuary until these days for the male or female child were accomplished. This is the law and testimony which was written down for Israel in order that they shall observe it all the days. And in the first week of the first jubilee, Adam and his wife were in the Garden of Eden for seven years, tilling and keeping it. And we gave him work, and we instructed him to do everything that is suitable for tillage. 
And he tilled the garden, and was naked, and knew it not, and was not ashamed. And he protected the gardens from the birds, and beasts, and cattle, and gathered its fruit, and eat, and put aside the residue for himself and for his wife, and put aside that which was being kept. And after the completion of the seven years, which he had completed there seven years exactly, and in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, the serpent came and approached the woman. And the serpent said to the woman, Hath God commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of every tree in the garden? And she said to it, Of all the fruits of the tree of the garden, God hath said unto us, Eat. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, hath said unto us, Ye shall not eat thereof, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that on the day ye shall eat thereof, your eyes will be opened, and you will be as gods, and you will know good and evil. And the woman saw the tree, that it was agreeable and pleasant to the eye, and that its fruit was good for food, and she took thereof and ate. And when she had first covered her shame with fig leaves, she gave thereof to Adam, and he ate, and his eyes were opened, and he saw that he was naked. And he took fig leaves, and sewed them together, and made an apron for himself, and covered his shame. And God cursed the serpent, and was wroth with it for ever. And he was wroth with the woman, because she hearkened to the voice of the servant, and did eat. And he said unto her, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy pains. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. In thy return shall be unto thy husband, and he will rule over thee. And to Adam also he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, and thou shouldest not eat thereof, cursed be the ground for thy sake, thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat thy bread in the sweet of thy face, till thy returnest to the earth from whence thou wast taken, for earth thou art, and unto earth thou shalt return. And he made for them coats of skin, and clothed them, and sent them forth from the garden of Eden. And on that day on which Adam with, went forth from the garden, he offered a sweet savour, an offering, frankincense, and spices in the morning with the rising of the sun from the day, and he covered his shame. And on that day was closed the mouth of all the beasts, and of the cattle, and of the birds, and of the whatever walks, and whatever moves, so that they could no longer speak, for they all have spoken one with one another, one lip and one tongue. And he sent out of the garden of Eden all flesh that was in the garden of Eden, and all flesh was scattered according to its kind, and according to its types, unto the place which had been created for him. And to Adam alone he did give the wherewithal to cover his shame for all the beast and cattle. And on this account it is prescribed in the heavenly tablets as touching all those who knew the judgment of the law that they should cover their shame and should not uncover themselves as the Gentiles uncover themselves. And on the new moon of the fourth month, Adam and his wife went forth from the garden of Eden and they dwelt in the land of Elda in the land of their creation. And Adam called the name of his wife Eve and they had no son till the first jubilee. And after this he knew her. Now he tilled the land as he had been instructed in the Garden of Eden. And that concludes our reading for today. Again, join us next week as we go deeper into the book of Jubilee. Just like the book of the Holy Twelve, this book is going to take us a couple of weeks, if not longer, to get through everything because we have 50 chapters in the book of Jubilee. Thank you guys for sitting through this episode. I hope that you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.